Hello and welcome. You have tuned into Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. I'm Shruti Sharma, and with me as always is Sharu Dasuda. And viewers, this is the show where you get answers for all your stock-related queries. As always, you can connect with us live on a WhatsApp number that will be flashing on the top of the screen, and we will try to help you with as many queries as possible to take with our experts. But for today, don't forget that today is Friday, and we're going to be getting you Buy Now, Sell Now part chala as well with Kunal Bhotra. But before that. Let's have a look at what the markets are up to. So, Cheryl, the markets are feels like that the markets are also getting ready for that long weekend. Uh, they are trading in the tight range, but nevertheless, good recovery from the day's low. Absolutely, uh, Shristi, uh, it is a good recovery from the day's low. Very good morning to you. And good since morning. you said it is Friday, you actually gave the entire description of what to expect. On this edition of Buy Now Sell Now, but yes, uh, we'll also have a techie special on this edition of Buy Now Sell Now. And a short file from now, we will also have a big policy news break. You can see the countdown on the top of your screen. In the next four minutes, we will get you that big uh, ET Now exclusive policy news break. Before that, uh, let's build on the market uh, setup that actually Shristi laid down for us. That the markets are recovering from the day's lowest point, as you can see in the positive territory coming in for uh, Nifty as well as Sensex. Nifty Bank also seen a recovery, three tenths of a percent uptick coming in for Nifty Bank. Take a look at the broader markets because they are the star performer once again in today's trading session with the small cap index actually recovering the fastest and the biggest recovery coming from the day's lowest point is from the small cap index. About eight tenths of a percent uptick from the day's lowest point for the small cap index now trading with gains about half a percent. If you look at the advanced decline ratio for now, it is skewed to the in the favors of the gainer. So hopefully we will be in for a better Friday when it comes to the market setup. Let's talk about the list of gainers and the losers in trade today. Then you have Apollo Hospitals that is the top gainer on the Nifty as we speak, along with Sun Pharma, Bajaj Auto, BPCL, Hero Motor Corp are the other set of gainers right now. Also add to that this Titan is seeing gains of about a percent. Or so, but on the flip side, it is LTI Mine Tree that's under pressure. Let, let me give you a caveat: all the tech counters are under pressure, and they are the top five or six Nifty losers in trade today. And the reason being for that, you have I, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Accenture that has actually gone ahead and trimmed the EPS outlook. So on back of that, you can see uh, LTI Mine Tree that's the top uh, loser on the Nifty. Apart from LTI Mine Tree, you have Wipro, you have HCL Tech, you have uh, Infosys, Tech Mahindra, TCS, all of those majors or uh, IT majors that are on the Nifty Index, all of them actually falling in trade today. Apart from that, you have DB's Laboratories, Aisha Motors, as well as Tata Consumer, among the other set of uh, uh, losers. But very mild losses coming in for those counters. Let's take a look at what the uh, print is when you talk about the sectoral uh, front. And yes. Uh, Needless to say, you have the IT index that is seeing sharp decline about uh, two percent or so. Uh, that's the only sectoral indices actually that I can see in the negative territory right now, Shristi. Apart from that, you have Realty index that's seen a decline about one point three percent. You have the small cap index. You have the PSU Bank, Pharma, all of them uh, gaining in trade today. So yes, uh, if you look at the market, it, I believe it would have been a whole lot better. Had you had also participation coming in from the IT sector stocks, given the fact that they're all declining with what happened to Accenture, isn't it? Well, yes, uh, that IT is definitely dampening the mood and the setup for the uh, whole of the markets. But other than that, one of the different pockets to look at is the uh, companies that are related to the gold Cheryl as well, because a lot of these companies, since gold has crossed that sixty six. 6,000 mark in the Indian markets as well and even in the international markets we are seeing gold metal shining bright. We have seen great moves coming in on all of these counters be it the finances as well as the companies related to the gold. Like Muthur and Manapuram have been buzzing in the past couple of days. In today's trading session if we look at some of the recently listed counters like Motison Jewelers, RBZ, they are also having stellar gains in today's trading session. And amongst the large cap space, don't forget to have an eye on Titan because that stock was also under pressure given the whole volatility that we have seen in the Tata group of stocks. But Titan is also recovering and having a gains of 1.3% 1, uh, 1 as of now. So this is one pocket that the market is definitely eyeing on as well as um, seems to be excitement kicking in here. Right, absolutely. So that's the uh, pockets of markets that you need to watch out for. Now let's move on to a big 
ET Now exclusive story and we learn from reliable sources that the government believes that there is strong growth visibility for the economy for at least next three years and that is reflected in the Boeing stock markets. The government is not in favor of any regulatory intervention in the market. My colleague Prakash is here with all those exclusive details and uh, Prakash, uh, uh, you have a source based information and pretty positive one especially when it comes to the view with regards to the stock markets, isn't it? Yes, we are learning from our sources that the finance ministry is not in favor of any regulatory intervention in the stock market. We are given to understand that the government is of the view that over-regulation of market can lead to market nervousness. Therefore, finance ministry in favor of free market mechanism. Our sources are also saying that the government is committed to predictable and a simple tax regime going forward and it believes that the fundamentals of the Indian economy are robust. In addition to that, our sources are also indicating that the government are in favor of increasing participation of retail investors in the stock market and uh, there is a predictability of high growth in the Indian economy for next three years. Along with that, we are also given to understand that the government is of the view that we have reached at a position where financial savings are now migrating to financial market and the stock markets are reflecting the fundamentals of the market. All right. Thank you so much for that, Prakash. Uh, indeed, a big uh, exclusive that the sources have told on the recent market correction, especially the Finman view uh, coming in on that particular front. Let me just quickly recap what exactly Prakash was actually telling us about. One uh, very pertinent point is that the finance ministry is not in favor of any regulatory intervention in the market. What the government believes or is government is of the view uh, that the over-regulation of the market can actually lead to market nervousness. They are committed uh, to predictable as well as stay, uh, stay, uh, simple uh, tax regime. That is what the sources have told, the government's view coming in. The sources have also informed uh, ET now the government is in favor of free market mechanism. The fundamentals of Indian economy remains robust and that is indeed reflected as well uh, in the, uh, the markets is what uh, the sources have indicated. And one of the big pertinent point actually or big takeaway coming in uh, from this entire story, Srishti, has to be the fact that the government or uh, the sources have said that the Finmin is not in favor of any regulatory intervention in the market and also the government feels that over-regulation of the market can indeed lead to market nervousness and the fact that the markets are actually seeing good moves, stability and hitting record high at least in the year 2020 for the first three months is also because it is reflective of what is exactly happening in the fundamentals of the economy. Well, yes, Cheryl, because in the recent while, we have seen a lot of changes that are happening, a lot of regulatory action, and the investors were also concerned. So this sort of comments indeed boosts the confidence of the investors at least. So that's the exclusive story that we have got for you all. But with this, viewers, let's move on in the show. And since it's Friday, let's quickly go across to Kunal Botra. He's joining us live in the studios, and let's understand which interesting topic he has got for us today. Very good morning, Kunal. On the screens, we can see inclined consolidation. Take us through what is this? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, if you remember last week, uh, you know, we were discussing a bullish hammer pattern. And fortunately, as I said uh, last week also, that it was all across red across the board uh, last week. And that turned out to be quite a pattern for the indices because both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty had actually turned around from a formation of the bullish hammer pattern that was seen just about start of this week. So that turned out to be quite well. The next observation which we are discussing in the uh, you know, Parshala segment today is on inclined consolidation. So we've seen many a time that you know, stock or an index goes into a phase of correction. But rarely do we see that when a stock or an index goes into a correction and post that when a bounce happens or a new trend begins for these stock prices, or for the asset classes, the uh, consolidation is on the positive side. So this is the Nifty Bank chart. Uh, as you can see that the recent charts for the Bank Nifty indicated that the uh, index corrected from 48,000 mark towards 44,000, 44,500 mark. But then what happened post that was a very slow gradual consolidation for the uh, Bank Nifty where it made a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. As you can see, every time the Bank Nifty managed to make a, a fresh swing high, the index moved up higher, the lows were substantially higher on the higher side for the banking index. So this is what we typically call it as in consolidation, but it's going through a very gradual kind of a mode, a very uh, you know low kind of a speed as compared to a sharp correction which the index had seen. So this is typically what we call as an index uh, or an inclined consolidation. We look at one more example that how this is beneficial for 
stock prices which typically go into a consolidation so this is the charge for ambuja cement as you can see the stock going into a very strong uptrend but then slowly and gradually the uptrend or the speed of the uptrend narrows down falls down significantly the stock continues to make a pattern of higher highs and higher lows and these bottoms or these dips or the retests towards the major trend line they actually become very good entry point for someone who's missed out on encashing the previous trend same was the case this time around when the stock had come back closer to this to uh, you know trend line support and from there it's managed to bounce back and find some good support yet again so this could be a very strong case building up for the markets going forward that after a sharp correction for many mid cap stocks we are actually likely to see a inclined consolidation for so many of the names all right thank you so much for that uh, uh, kunal for getting us something new this time around in the path shala that is inclined con consolidation and the fact that we have to actually look at the screen to read it is which means that it is something new that uh, i'm sure shristi and myself both are actually yeah. learning today and i'm sure that our viewers also who are watching this uh, very closely uh, or uh, rather watching our stories very closely would also be benefiting from today's edition of bns and path shala but on that note we slip into a break on this edition of buy now sell now when we come back we'll start taking your queries so don't go anywhere Welcome back you're watching buy now sell now on ET now and as we mentioned at the start of the show that today is Friday we had the BNS and Path Shala and now we will begin uh with this edition of a uh, buy now sell now query segment and it's going to be a techy special but for now on the technical front we have Kunal Bosa who is joining us and remember viewers you can write to us all of your technical uh technical queries on the number that's flashing on your screen do remember each time you write to us do mention your name the stock that you're looking to invest in mention that name as well if you already invested in the stock mention the buy price the quantity as well as the time horizon in that way our experts will be able to help you better so with that let me kick start with all uh, the queries and this one is coming in uh, from the first query is coming in from subramanian who is writing to us from chennai and kunal uh, firstly i must tell you on behalf of all of our viewers is great to have you back on the show for some reason our viewers are thinking that you are not on buy now sell now anymore no no I'm definitely on buy now sell now <laughs> all right i hope that uh, soothes all those frayed nerves of all the viewers who've been tuning in every day asking about where is kunal why is kunal not coming back on the show but yes uh definitely kunal is still very much an integral part of a buy now sell now and you will definitely see him on the show week after week we will not let him go that easily especially at least for a uh, bns and pashala for sure kunal you want to come in on that yeah yeah absolutely so i think it's a show which you know i remember i think it started off i started off uh, you know being one of the uh, you know first ones amongst the previous editions also for bnsn there was a point when i think there were live queries also which you taken and i think right now so we have moved into a different version altogether so i think it's a fantastic uh, you know show altogether and i would very much be a part of it absolutely so i hope that uh, comments uh, will soothe all those nerves and let me now take the queries that's coming from subramanian who's writing to us from chennai uh, he has karnataka bank uh, he's bought the shares at a price of around 106 rupees per share he also has lnt finance 105 shares at a price of 90 rupees per share should he go ahead and partly book profits in all uh, in these counters or, sh or should he look to switch to some other counters altogether what sort of strategy should he use short to medium term outlook so i think it depends on the balance of the portfolio so it's very difficult to try and you know give you a suggestion that karnataka bank and lnt finance you can switch to some other formidable names it depends on the construct of your portfolio whether you already have large cap names both banking as well as on the nbfc side then i think it would probably make sense to try and hold on to these names but if you uh, if your portfolio is devoid of large cap stocks then it makes a lot of sense to shift to large cap names maybe something like sbi uh, icic bank at current levels could be better bet provided your portfolio requires that kind of a uh, you know a churn as such but i would believe lnt finance is something which I, i think you should continue to hold on my sense is that the stock on the longer term basis looks very attractive i believe over the next 12 to 18 months the stock can even look to surpass about the 200 level so i'm very bullish on the stock yes it's been a, a, a bit more volatile off late but i would believe that the longer term trend is still very much intact all right moving on then and uh, the next query that i have is um, is again for you kunal uh, a lot of our viewers are writing for you today so kiran is uh, wants your take on three counters actually and why i'm asking three counters because she's been writing to us for like almost every day uh, firstly cesc 100 uh, 
1,000 shares uh, bought at a price of 123 rupees. Patel Engineering, 1,000 shares at a price of 64 rupees. As well as Poonawala FinCorp, a buy price is 420 rupees. Uh, good to hold on for the next four to six months. What will be your advice? Well, absolutely, yes. I think uh, uh, at least two out of the three names, which is CESC as well as Poonawala FinCorp, are quite strong in terms of the charts. Uh, you know, Poonawala FinCorp, I think, has gone through a a very sharp correction and I think in the last few months the stock has shown sturdiness, recovery uh, as well as a lot of strength. There's been great volume accumulation for Punawala, Punawala Fincorp at lower levels. I think 430 or 435 was the low for the stock in the recent correction and from there it's managed to resurrect uh, quite well. I would believe that you should hold on to the stock from a long term basis uh, and same with, uh, would be the case with CESC. Again an excellent chart. The stock has formed a major base and remember I think uh, you know we recommended the stock Closer to that, uh, or sub 100 levels, 1995 approximately, there was a first time when we pointed off a major breakout which is emerging into the stock price. And from there, the stock has been just gaining strength after strength. So, so still looks attractive, but uh, both these stocks should be held on to it from a long term basis, assuming that's a time frame. All right, Kunal, a short and simple query coming from Guru. He wants to know what Natco Pharma, should he look to buy Natco Pharma right now? Well, I would not be uh, hurrying into buying the stock because it's still consolidating. So, a stock which uh, tends to just be lay uh, a bit offbeat when the market gets into a full song uptrend, I think that's a, that's the kind of stock which I would probably typically avoid. You have to wait out for a confirmation of a breakout or a change of trend. For uh, Natco Pharma, that could be potentially about the 1000 marks, say 1020 to be precise, uh, which could be a previous swing breakout for Natco Pharma. About those levels is what I would recommend as a buy. All right. Uh, once again, coming to you, Kunal. This query is uh, from uh, Prashant, and uh, he's holding 150 shares of Happiest Minds. And two years back, he entered this stock at a price of 1450 rupees. Then averaged it at around 1000 rupees, and still facing a loss of almost 22 uh, percent. Is this stock worth averaging going ahead? If we feel that the stock um, is under pressure, or um, what would be your advice? He wishes to stay invested for the next two to three years. See, I would suggest to just stay invested over here because it's di very difficult to forecast on a longer term basis for the stock. The chart history is limited uh, to, to just about two and a half, three years for happiest minds. Uh, the stock has formed a major bottom uh, uh, post uh, the listing. From there, the stock went up to I think 3x or 4x from sub 500 levels to 1500 mark and then it's gone through a correction. So, in case if the second or the subsequent uptrend for the stock is on the upside and assuming if it breaks past about the say 1000, 1200 levels, that's where we would probably expect that that two years of downtrend could be over for the stock price. As of now, no evidence on the charts that the major correction is over. So, I would just suggest to hold on to the stock, not to add. Uh, what the markets are doing at this point in time. Remember that we just bought that exclusive story coming up index is doing because that one has actually no doubt it already had recovered from the day's lowest point. It's recovered a tad bit more. Now at the day's highest point, that's the small cap index for you. Take a look at what the Nifty is doing because that one also has seen a half a percent recovery or more than half a percent recovery uh, from the day's lowest point. Now trading uh, higher by about quarter of a percent. That is your uh, uh, that is your nifty. Let's take a look at uh, what are the sectoral indices doing at this point in time. Yes, barring IT sector, all the sectors were in the positive territory, be it the realty index, be it the metal index. All of them have seen good uh, up move in today's uh, trading session. Let's uh, put the spotlight especially on the PSU sector and see what is happening there. Because remember that a lot of these mid cap uh, counters when they started correcting, you saw a lot of corrections creep into all of these PSU counters as well. Nifty PSE would be the apt uh, index to show a lot of these uh, uh, PSU counters just uh, start seeing some sort of a correction but uh, and that also kind of uh, made everyone worry about the fact that is the rally over, is the flavor of PSU is now out. But let's hear what Nilesha of Envision Capital had to say on, on the PSU sector as a whole, as well as Sandeep Tandon. Both of them shared their views on PSUs recently. But I clearly believe that PSUs uh, are in for some kind of a more long-term re-rating. They have kind of re-rated meaningfully. It's quite possible that over the course of next maybe, uh, you know, couple of months or so, uh, if there's further correction, I clearly believe that even in the large cap space, uh, the PSUs do offer offer a great opportunity. And post the elections, if a fresh bout of reforms come in specifically directed at driving more efficiency among the PSUs, uh, clearly believe that's going to be a, a great opportunity. I believe private 
private banks again are poised for some uh, good good. And third is the entire auto pack. Uh, the auto pack uh, is, is is automobile pack is essentially still well poised. Uh, they seem to be headed for some some strong growth over the medium to long term. From that Reliance, I think uh, Reliance again is continues to be a good place to be in. Um, I think it's in the right verticals across energy, retail, digital. Uh, and uh, that continues to be a very, very interesting play going forward. And we own it as well. We are looking at, we have been talking about value as a thesis and obviously PSU qualify as a value thesis right from September 2021. So it will not be, we were relatively as compared to somebody is looking at the top. We are very early in identifying that inflection point and I've been very bullish for last two, more than two years now in this space. So we, but we remain very constructive. If you look at the larger picture, we are looking for the PSUs, okay? Uh, neither we get too uh, complacent about the move which we happened very recently, nor we get too tense about what happened in last two or three trading sessions. So that's the take coming in from the big voices in the markets that they uh, continue to be constructive in the PSU space. But in the couple of last couple of days as well, we have seen some recoveries in all these PSU counters. And taking one of those names and one of those queries, then uh, Kunal Kaurav is holding 300 shares of BPCL uh, from a price of 610 rupees. Any near-term targets to look out for in this particular stock? All these OMCs have recovered quite smartly in the last couple of days. See, I think uh, I'll, I'll differentiate between PSUs and uh, OMCs at current levels because I'm very bullish on PSUs uh, going forward. And I think that this correction which has happened for these PSU stocks, I think should be uh, you know grabbed with both hands, at least from a longer term perspective. Now, one of course has to try and filter out the stocks. You can't buy the entire basket in the list of PSU names. But for OMCs, uh, I would believe that this could probably be just a minor rally at play. You have to try and uh, look out for maybe another round of correction for the OMC stocks. I would at least wait out for that second phase of correction or a double retest towards the previous swing lows. That's going to be a very important and critical level to try and watch out for because the data points which have transferred for uh, PSUs, the OMC specifically, has been on the negative side. These stocks have managed to break below their key moving average supports and there has been more volumes which have been seen on the way down for the stock price. So I'll wait out for a confirmation of the volumes coming back on the way up. Till that time, I'll avoid the space. Uh, Kunal, just to come, on, come in on that, the reason why you've separated OMCs from the rest of the PSU pack is one of the reasons could be its dependence on the crude oil and the commodity markets. And if that is the case, then do you think that way we'll also have to segregate the commodity-linked uh, companies as well, PSU com companies like the metal pack and all? Will your view be the same for them as well? Yeah, yeah, I'll be very bullish on the entire metal pack, uh, the PSU side of the metal pack. So whether it's the likes of, example, Hindustan Copper, Zinc, etc. I think these stocks are looking extremely strong on the charts. You know, when copper hits three years, four years kind of, uh, you know, lifetime highs or, uh, you know, fresh highs for itself, that's a very strong telltale sign that uh, you, we are going through a stronger revival into the metal and the commodity spaces. So I would be very bullish on that pack. But yeah, I think for OMCs, maybe crude rising is one of the other points. But the data points for the, uh, the OMC stock specifically, I think that's a bit more uh, sluggish rather than very enthusiastic. And viewers, we are back with the latest edition of Times Now Summit, where over the years, Time Now Summit has been championing pertinent national agenda points where India's leadership, leading thinkers and national influencers come together to define the action plan for India's progress. Themed India Unstoppable this year, we will focus on charting India's remarkable journey and its increasing influence on the global stage. Join us on 27th and 28th of March in New Delhi and watch the who's who of the political corridors share their views. Do stay with us with all the highlights and all the action as the action begins here on Times Network. Welcome back to Buy Now Sell Now, where we uh, we take all the stock-related queries um, and get them answered by our experts. And on the technical expert side, let me welcome on board 
Kush Bora, who is joining us on the technical front, and we already have Kunal Botra with us. Uh, very good afternoon, Kush, and um, uh, let me take the first query that I have uh, for you, and this one is coming from Satya Vaini, and he wants uh, advice on HDFC Live. Um, he's been holding 800 shares, and his average price is 720 rupees. Uh, what will be your advice on this particular counter? Uh, should he go ahead and average this one at this point in time? Sure, uh, Shishti on a lighter note, starting the weekend early, are we? It's still a very good morning. It's still some time in the afternoon. <laughs> Actually, Kush, I, I wanted to say exactly the same thing because uh, <laughs> she wished you good morning, I, uh, good afternoon and I was like, oh, yeah. it looks like <laughs> Shishti is already in the weekend mode, only, only waiting. <laughs> no, I think I instead think of the, long I... weekend, we should be saying that it's a short week next. Oh, yeah, that's actually yeah, better, much is, better, uh, yes. It's a short week next. Uh, it'll be shorter for me also. You'll not see me one of those days as well. So it'll be much shorter for me, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, Kush, you can continue. And yes, looks like uh, uh, Shishti is really waiting for that long weekend already. Well, I'm yes, um, I, I wouldn't deny that. But Kush, <laughs> <laughs> getting back to the queries then, what will be your advice on HDFC Live? Sure. I think the stocks had a decent run up, but uh, I think, you know, those hangovers are starting to play on it again. Every time we see a run on the stock and there's a supply pressure that comes in this time around, it's a very clear 200-day uh, moving average pressure that the stock is taking. I think from here on, you know, the stock would consolidate, uh, you know, for some time. Uh, I don't see too big an upside on this. So perhaps, you know, you have to wait for his buying price to come about. But if the view is, let's say, 12 to 18 months, then no issues. Hold on to this one. The momentum could be slow. But, uh, you know, no problems holding on. As I said, the waiting period could be perhaps a little longer. Right, uh, moving on then, uh, this uh, next query that I have is coming in from Anjana from Kolkata. No doubt she's asked for an investment for five years or so, but she wants to know whether it's the right time to go ahead and buy PB Fintech right now. She, uh, she's bullish on new age tech companies. Kunal, are you bullish on uh, new age tech companies and especially PB Fintech, right time to buy it? Because if you look at it, in the last three months, wow, 45%. Actually, I didn't even see that coming for PB Fintech given the fact that they did not have a great run last year, right? Well, I'm very bullish on the stock, in fact, Shell, because I would believe that uh, out of the few new age stock companies, uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, just Zomato is the only one which has managed to make a fresh high, lifetime high crossing more than 169, 170 mark post-listing high for itself. And uh, PB Fintech has managed to retrace more than 50%. So, you know, we, we keep this idle benchmark that when a stock falls by, say, an uh, you know, X amount of uh, you know, rupees in terms of price levels, then if it manages to recover almost 50% of that uh, fall, that's the time where we look out for, uh, you know, that the stock becomes a very strong contra buy and tides have changed for the stock price. PB Fintech has already done that from 1425 the stock was almost at 370 375 levels and now it's come back to that 1100 mark so it's substantially crossed those key hurdle points i would believe that this is a very strong stock from a long term basis so uh, if you are if you have a long, long term time horizon i think you should look to hold on to the stock and also look to add even if there is any kind of a 5% to 10% kind of an odd correction which comes by all right, moving on then and Kunal, once again coming to you, actually Bishaka has been writing to us almost daily to have take on two counters. Firstly, he's holding uh, Salzar Electronics from a price of 340 rupees, good to hold on for the long term. And he also wants an advice on a stock called uh, Strinix uh, Performance. Earlier it was named Ineos Stero. Uh, for, for now, the name has been changed and uh, this one is Strinix Performance. Any advice on this particular stock as well? His buy price is actually 1,092 rupees. So yeah, I think for, uh, you know, uh, Salzer, uh, that's a stock which I think has done exceptionally well. I was actually looking at the charts while you were mentioning and the stock has done quite well from 350, 400 levels to now 800 plus. Even in this last phase of correction, the stock corrected uh, by a margin of 15 odd percent, but then it's come back quite strongly and made a fresh high. So that's a stock which I would believe uh, Salzer uh, Electronic looks attractive. The stock is trading at almost 830, 835 levels. I would suggest to hold on to the stock. For Strenix, on the other hand, I, I think uh, I was looking at the data that the volumes for the stock was a lot more less and the correction has been quite sharp and the stock has been unable to come back into a breakout mode for itself. So I would probably be a bit wary on the stock, but I think Salzer is something which I would recommend to hold on. 
All right, um, let's move on then. Let me take this one from Shashidhar, writing to us from Hyderabad. Uh, he has Sigachi uh, at the price of 80 rupees per share, Kush. Uh, he wants to know whether he should sell this one or hold on to it, 500 shares or so. Also has uh, JM Financial, 1,000 shares at a price of 102 rupees per share. What should be his stake in both of it? Uh, uh, Sigachi, anyways, he's making a loss on that particular counter. And JM Financial, 102 is the buy price. So, so uh, as far as, you know, uh, Sigachi goes, the stock's uh, seen a sharp correction. You know, we know the volumes are uh, rather thin on this one, you know, usually. And the drop that was uh, there was quite sharp. I think it's uh, now close to the support zones and attempting a rebound. Although, you know, the buy price is way higher, the stock could very well see, you know, a rebound in the coming months. So, I think hold on uh, Sigachi. A very similar view on... Uh, GM Financial as well. This stock too had seen a nice run up, you know, before the directives came in and the stock actually cracked. It's now consolidating. We are seeing some positive divergences on this one. So I think this stock is also gearing up for higher levels. Although 100 and, you know, levels above that could take some more, uh, you know, time to come given the hangover of the news. But I think, you know, both of these stocks are a hold uh, you know, at the current juncture. Moving on then, and Kunal, the next query that I have is coming from Sudhir from Kochi, and he's been holding uh, some of the shares for around two years, and now they are at a break-even level. Some of the stocks like Divi's Lab, Deepak Nitride, as well as Apple India uh, is in, in his portfolio. Uh, good to move out of these, any of the names uh, amongst the three at this point in time, or continue to hold on all three of them. I think you should continue to hold on to all three of them. Uh, these stocks, even though have gone through a major time-wise consolidation, but I believe they are uh, top quality names in their respective sectors. So whether it's uh, you know, DV Slab across the pharma names or Affil as well as Deepak Nitrate, I think all three of them have uh, quite strong charts. Yes, the consolidation has been more prolonged for these stocks, but that's the nature of the stock prices because you know there, there would be time when these stocks multiply, go into 3x, 5x kind of returns in a very contracted time period. 12, 18 months, but then for uh, for that to get compensated, these stocks, they have to spend a lot of time and consolidate. Uh, in the process of consolidation, if you get these stocks maybe another 10%, 15% or lower uh, than your average cost price, then I think that should be taken as a good averaging opportunity. All right, uh, that's the take coming in on Apple India. On that note, let us uh, slip into a quick break on this edition of uh, Buy Now, Sell Now. When we come back, actually, uh, we will uh, continue taking all of your stock-related queries to Kunal Bhotra as well as Kush Bora, so don't go anywhere viewers. Welcome back, you're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. Let's continue with uh, the technical special with Kush uh, Bora as well as Kunal Bhotra. Uh, let's continue with taking the queries. This one is coming in from V Murli. This one is for you, Kunal. He wants to know about uh, Prestige Estates. He's already purchased this counter from the price of around 1,034 rupees per share. What's the prospect of this particular counter? And also, he wants uh, some of these uh, counters like Credo Brands, Kaval Kiran, or Electronics Marts. Which one of these would be better for uh, the next 12 months? First, Prestige Estates. And then, if you want, I'll recap the other names for you. So, uh, Prestige, I think, has uh, gone through a corrective phase, again, uh, more or less in line with how the real estate stocks have, did, have done. But I think the correction has been a bit more steeper for the stock. If I'm not wrong, uh, it's almost corrected 30%, 30, 32% odd from the previous highs of 1400, 1440 for uh, itself. Uh, it's come back to the 200 day moving average, so missed that by a margin of, I think, a few percentage points. But looks attractive at current levels. and. Uh, I would believe that you can continue to hold on, but the only concern with the stock is the beta of the stock is significantly higher than many of the other peers. So I think you'll have to probably try and proportion that. Uh, so you have to tweak it in terms of the size of your portfolio and then look at the proportion of the stock where it fits to the overall size of your portfolio. Uh, out of the other names which you mentioned, uh, Electronic Marts is something which I do track. That's a stock which uh, I think has been looking very attractive. So I remember I think there was a, a phase where the stock moved from uh, two digits, 75, 80 odd rupees towards almost 200 to 50, uh, 240 odd levels. It's now come back to that sub 200 mark. So I think this could be a very attractive point for you to buy. All right, moving on then. And Kush, coming to you, this query is from uh, K. Venu Gopal Reddy and he wants an advice on IEX. He has bought the shares at a price of 160 rupees. Um, what will you advise for average hold or sell at this point? Well, you know, like a broken record, averaging is not something that I'll recommend. Again, the reason being that the stock's not nearly, you know, quite formed the bottom yet. You know, although it's trying to, you know, hold on to that 135 mark, there have been days when it slipped below that. 
Now, along with the market and, uh, you know, uh, given that the stock had already corrected a lot, we're seeing some sort of a recovery. But I think, you know, this stock could uh, you know, perhaps see some consolidation around these levels. So I think, uh, you know, 130 to about 145 is the zone where the stock could spend some time. Uh, once the stock crosses 145 is when he should consider adding more. That's when the momentum could return uh, to the stock. That will still be significantly below, you know, his buying price and, you know, buying at 145 or thereabouts will still bring the cost price down. And it will also keep the stock at a surer footing that, you know, the uh, uh, near-term trend at least would have uh, changed for the stock. So for now, hold, add more, uh, you know, above the 145 mark. All right, uh, coming to you, Kunal. This one is coming from Radha, writing to us from Bangalore. She has LNT Finance at a price of 175 rupees per share, about 200 shares. She wants to know what should she do? How is it looking on the charts to you? So I'm very bullish on the stock. Uh, in fact, just some time back, I mentioned that uh, I would look out for targets of 200 plus for LNT Finance with a time frame of 12 to 18 months. So I think what you need to now tweak or uh, look out for is a strategy where you can to average, try to bring down your cost price and try and utilize the correction which happens into the stock. So assuming if it comes back to that 148 or 145 mark, which was the previous swing support for LNT Finance, that could be a very good point for email to average. All right, moving on and Kush, the next query that I have is coming in on Craftsman Automation. This one is from Poonam from Punjab, holding 25 shares from a rise of 4,245 rupees. Sitting at a loss in this one, but good to hold on? Absolutely. Uh, you know, the good thing is that the buy price is significantly lower from the top, you know, from where the stock started falling. And if you see the last couple of sessions, the stock's been up on the back of very decent volumes. Plus, you know, as we've discussed before also in the show that, you know, this space is seeing a lot of traction. I think he could very well continue to hold on. In fact, you know, on the bounce, he could look to add some more, uh, you know, bring the average cost a little lower. So, uh, you know, I think of current levels uh, look to add some more. Uh, the stock could very well in the coming days hit, you know, 4,400 and even the 4,600 mark. So uh, not only hold on, perhaps add some more. But if it's more of a trading bet, then a, uh, then a stop loss will come in about 3,800, 3,850 kind of levels. All right. This one is coming in from Sandeep from Lucknow. He wants to know about NGL Fine Chemicals. Kunal, do you track this one by any chance? He wants to know if it's the right time to buy this one. Yeah, I do track it, uh, but you know, again, a very illiquid name. I think uh, around just thousand shares, fifteen hundred shares. The uh, average volume, at least today, the stock has shown that kind of a volume. And over the last few months, it's been just about some ten, twelve thousand odd as an average volume for the stock price. So a caveat that you have to be a lot more wary with such kind of names. Uh, in terms of the chart patterns, it's it's looking quite okay on the charts. Uh, medium term basis, eighteen hundred seems to be a very good support. And on the upside, 2,400 was tested for the stock price. So I think at 2,000 levels, you can look to uh, buy maybe one tranche at current levels. And in case if the stock provides a dip towards 1,800, 1,850 mark, look to add further. All right, moving on then. And uh, Kunal, what will be your advice on ITC? RK Jalan is holding more than 3,300 shares from a price of 438 rupees. Uh, can he expect this counter to reach 450 levels in the near term? Or would you advise uh, that at this point in time, whenever he gets into some mild profits, he should just book out book out from ITC? No, I think I'm very bullish on the stock. So you know, there was a phase where you know we preempted a buy for ITC at the turning point when the stock was at the uh, 200 odd levels. It moved on to almost 495, uh, retested almost at 500 level. But then I think the stock has gone through a 20% correction. Very recently also, I think I've given a buy call for ITC because my expectation is that the stock has probably ended this five, six month of time-wise as well as a price-wise correction. A 20% correction for a large cap stock generally considered to be a very good entry point. So I would suggest to hold on to the stock. Maybe I think uh, you know you could probably have looked to average since the stock was trading quite some time at the 400 levels to try and bring your cost price lower. But uh, nevertheless, I would continue to recommend to hold on. All right, uh, this next one, maybe it's in sync with what Shristi was saying. Uh, good afternoon, uh, given the fact that the next query is on uh, something that she can think about ordering for lunch this, uh, today. It's on Burger King. 600 shares of Burger King is what Anuradha has in a portfolio at a price of 150 rupees per share. She's a long-term investor, wants to know for the next three years, uh, does it make sense to stay put on this one? Should she look to hold? Sell, average, or do an SIP on this one, or any alternate business. Kush, what's your take on Burger King in particular? Uh, do you think uh, that Shishi should go ahead and order it this afternoon? And also, what should Anuradha do with the portfolio? 
well, you know, as far as the health factor goes, not a big fan, <laughs> but of course, <laughs> to each their own. Uh, no, I think the stock's actually uh, now starting to find uh, feet. So what I will do is perhaps, you know, wait for some more time uh, before I actually sort of uh, consider Burger buying King. here. Burger King is restaurant brand Asia. Restaurants brand Asia, right? Sorry, That's I was just, yeah, absolutely. yes. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, so the stock's now trying to find its feet. It's a little too early to call it out of the woods. In fact, for the last month and a half, the stock's actually resisted at the 20-day moving average and slipped from there. So uh, why not wait a little? Wait for the 110 mark to be taken out once that is uh, done. Perhaps, you know, a near-term bottom will be in place and the stock can rebound. So hold for some more time. Uh, look to add or buy, uh, you know, above the 110 mark. Hold is a take coming in uh, from uh, uh, from Kush for a restaurant's brand Asia or but Burger King. S- but I would rather save the junk for the weekend, Sharon. All right, because she's already <laughs> in the weekend mode, isn't it? Holy hey, isn't it, uh, Shristi? So yeah, but on that note, we'll have to kick start with rapid fire. Well, yes, let's uh, take all the queries then. And the first query that I have, Kunal, is coming in from... From an FNO space, actually one of our viewers named Ramesh has bought BPCL 600 call option at a price of 9 rupees, very close to the current market price. But how much it can increase should he go ahead given the long weekend? Well, I would suggest to uh, you know, try to book out profits or maybe exit the stock when it comes closer to your cost price. Alright, this was from Anu, wants to know about NBCC, 400 shares at a price of 138 rupees per share, should average out what sort of uh, strategy could uh, Kush? Uh, hold on to this one, don't look to average just yet. Okay, Kunal uh, Gangadharan is holding 900 shares of TTK Prestige for an average price of 900 rupees. What's the advice going in, uh, going ahead? He's a long term investor. Exit the stock. Alright, Kush, uh, Triveni Turbine, you have Ved who's a long term investor. The stock is near its all time high levels, but is it, is it a good buy right now? It is. Uh, he could look to you know add now also, and even if the stock declines and you know comes close to this 480, 475 levels. Okay, uh, Kunal, any advice on India Glycols? Uh, one of his viewers named Siddharth has uh, been holding the stock um, from a lower level, and his time frame is to stay invested for the next three to six months. I would suggest to hold on to the stock. All right, this has come from Vidya. He is a short term trader. Wants to know about HCL Tech. Right time to enter right now in the short term, of course, given the fact that it's seen corrections. Uh, for the short term, no. Avoid. Okay, Kush, what will be your advice on GR Infra projects? Uh, Mahalakshmi is holding the shares from a price of 1270 rupees. She is a long term investor. What to do? So for GR Infra, continue to hold. The stock is in, uh, is in a mild uh, uptrend now, but this could accelerate going forward. Alright, uh, Kunal, Alok wants to know about Phenolex Cables, 400 shares at 1100 rupees per share. Wants to know when will the stock break even or at least reach a target price of 1200 rupees per share? It looks quite some time and the stock will take quite some time because it's still reeling below its 200 day moving average. Uh, maybe you can continue to hold on. And Kunal, lastly, what's your advice on Power Grid? Can Gotham go ahead and buy this counter at this point in time? Very bullish on the stock and my expectation is that at least over the near term, the stock should retest its previous size of 298. All right, and with that, we come to the end of the rapid fire as well as the techie special show on uh, Buy Now Sell Now. Thank you so much, Kush, as well as Kunal, for patiently answering all the queries. And Kunal, thank you especially for the BNS and Pasha. And with that, we come to the end of this week's edition of Buy Now Sell Now as well. So uh, it's a goodbye and a big thank you for tuning in from our producer Shriyansi, our directors Akshay and Santosh, and goodbye from Shrishti and myself. We'll see you next week. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.